Good morning. Happy Sabbath, kindergarten and primary kids. We're glad that you're here with us. It's just me, Jesus, and a few kids here to welcome you to Sabbath school today. Hope you're doing well at home. We miss seeing you, but can't wait uh, to get together whenever the time is healthy and right for us to do that. But in the meantime, I'm glad we can connect here online. Our mom and dad close by, either one, mom or dad, I have a quick announcement for them. Are they there? What about now? Mom? Dad? Okay. This announcement is about uh, needing some feedback. If you've been watching our, our programs, our children's story time in the evenings, or these Sabbath school programs on our Keen Kids for Jesus Facebook page, we need your feedback. We need your help in order to make it the best possible experience for all involved. So tomorrow evening, we're going to be posting a survey. Look for it. You might even get an email about it. Uh, but we need you to fill out that survey and let us know what your desires are for this time where we are on shutdown. It will help us know better how to share Jesus together during these times. So look for that and please fill it out in the early part of the week if you can. Boys and girls, our story time today is about a very cool lesson from the life of Jesus near the end of his life. And I want to ask you a question to start it off. My kids used to play a game called Would You Rather? And it would ask you a simple question, like, would you rather play basketball or baseball? Would you rather be rich or famous? And you get to choose A or B, A or B. Well, what about this question? Would you rather eat a large bowl of your favorite ice cream or would you rather clean up after someone threw up on the floor? Now, which of those choices, A, ice cream or B, cleanup time? Well, it's probably not a difficult decision for you to make, but I think you might be surprised by how Jesus might answer that question in our story today. What would he have chosen to do? We're gonna find that out as we get into the lesson, but before we do that, we've got some music time coming at us and some time of mission story. As we get started today, let's ask Jesus to be with us. Can you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the chance we have to get together. Please bless our time together. Be with each boy and girl as they're there in their home. Give them a wonderful Sabbath. And we pray that as we dig into your word today, that you would teach us something, Lord, that we would see your story and learn something. Move on our hearts and, and draw us close to you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, boys and girls, it's time for some singing. And we want to turn it over to the Lauterbach family. So thankful for Julie and Robbie Lauterbach and their girls. Take it away, kids. Let's hear some beautiful singing right now. Lauterbachs. Good morning, boys and girls. Happy Sabbath. We're so thankful to be here with you this morning to worship. Please join us in singing Here I Am to Worship. Thank you. 
Our special music will be He's Able. He's Hello, I'm here to tell you your mission story for this week. It's about an eight-year-old little girl named Rebecca, and she went and spent her summer vacation with her grandparents in Estonia. At the end of the summer, she, had, she and her mother had to go home to their country, which is Norway, which is north of the Arctic Circle. They live in a town called Sortsland, and it's an island town, and there's about 10,000 people who live in that town. When she got home, she was thinking about school, and she remembered that there was a girl that had been very mean and ugly to her the previous school year, and so she was worried about what was going to happen when school started again. So she went and she told her mom about her worries, and her mom just hugged her and told her, she said, you know, Rebecca, she said, I'm worried too. She said, in a few days, I'm going to start a new job. And I'm afraid that I don't speak the Norwegian language well enough to do my work. Rebecca's mother had been born in Estonia and they had moved to Norway and she had been studying the language for about four years. So Rebecca's mom looked at her and she said, God is almighty. God has a way for us. And he is preparing for us. Let's pray. So Rebecca and mother closed their eyes and they said, Thank you, God, that you are preparing a way for Rebecca and me. Mother prayed. In her prayer, Rebecca thanked God for helping her at school and for helping mother at work. Let's claim God's promise in Isaiah 41.10, Mom said. Mom had memorized the verse and she suggested that Rebecca Rebecca repeated after here, after her, Fear not, for I am with you, Mother said. Fear not, for I am with you, Rebecca said. Be not dismayed, for I am your God, Mother said. Be not dismayed, for I am your God, repeated Rebecca. I will strengthen you, Mother said. I will strengthen you, Rebecca said. Yes, I will help you, Mother said. Yes, I will help you, Rebecca said. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand, Mom said. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, Rebecca said. Rebecca felt better after talking with Mom, and she went off to play with her favorite plush bunny. That evening, however, Rebecca remembered the girl as she lay in bed. Her mom patted her head, and she told Rebecca, she said, I'm worried about my new job. But God is almighty. God has a way for us. So Rebecca and mother closed their eyes and thanked God for preparing the way. After praying, mother and Rebecca recited Isaiah 41.10. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In the morning, Rebecca and the mother prayed and they claimed the Bible promise again. They also prayed about school and the new job the next evening and at breakfast, lunch, and supper. They prayed this way every day, sometimes in the middle of the day. Rebecca would feel worried about school and mother would worry about her new job, but they prayed. 
It says, before long, Rebecca had memorized Isaiah 41.10, and she and Mother prayed the promise at the same time. When the first day of school came, Rebecca wasn't scared. To her joy, the girl didn't even say a single unkind word. In fact, the girl was kind and friendly. Rebecca was so happy that God had heard her prayers. So his mother, meanwhile, started her new job, and she didn't have any difficulty speaking Norwegian. She loved caring for her patients, and mother was so happy God had heard prayers. Part of this quarter's 13th Sabbath offering will help to open a community center, a youth community center in Rebecca's hometown, Sortland, so people can learn about the Almighty God who answers prayers. Thank you for planning on giving a generous offering. And just remember, during this time that we are in, we can claim Isaiah 41.10. Thank you. Love you guys and miss you so much. The project we want to show you is how to make a bird feeder. Are you ready to make one? Yeah. Okay, let's tell them what they need. First, we need a toilet paper roll. Yep. Peanut butter. Yep. Bird seed. Yep. And then anything you want to bedazzle it with, if you want to paint, if you have a milk jug, if you've got a, what else did we use? Oh, we used empty cans. Yeah. From vegetables. Um, basically anything around the house that'll hold bird seed and that you can hang out. Hey, and are these the birds we're, we're trying to out. feed? No. Oh, okay. Silly old birds. Um, I know you kind of might recognize me, but like, so I'm here. Um, of course, you know, I'm making a bird seeder. Um, we're using toilet paper wrapper. Of course, there's still some toilet paper on it. And a peanut butter to wrap around it. So let's get started because, as you can see, it's not stripping. So, as I would like to eat it. No. Hey, it looks like you got it covered in peanut butter. What are you going to do next? Now I'm going to roll in peanut in these bird seed. Bird seed? Uh huh. Okay. This is the bird seed. And now I roll it. And of course, you can see I'm possibly getting people right on me. And on string. So just take your toilet paper roll, cover it in peanut butter, then roll it in the bird seed. Yep. And then what will we do with it, Caitlin? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, next we're going to take some string or some rope or twine, whatever you have, tie it around like the one Caitlin's holding. And then hang it from a tree, just wherever you want. And we'll show you what so that looks Here's like. the finished product. And here are some other ideas that you can use to make your homemade bird feeders. Pick any can, take the label off, paint it however you want, and put paper around it, and then just hang it up with some string. Looking forward to see what you guys come up with. Hi everyone, it's Aunt Fernita. Today's story is called Jesus the Servant. The memory verse is from John chapter 13, verse 14. It says, Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. Today's message is is we show God's love when we serve others. Do some chores you have to do seem unpleasant? Jesus did one of those jobs for his disciples. He wanted to show his disciples how much he loved them and how they should serve others. Jesus and his disciples had gathered to celebrate Passover. Jesus knew this was the last meal he would eat with them before he died, and there was still so much he wanted to teach them. His disciples could feel that something was about to happen, but they were expecting Jesus to take the throne and to become the ruler of the country. They were waiting for him to set up a kingdom on earth, and each wanted the very best place in it. Each one of them believed he deserved the most important position. 
In those days, a servant usually washed the guest's feet before dinner, especially an important dinner like the Passover. And everything was there in the room where they had gathered. The pitcher, the bowl, the towel. Everything except the servant. Dinner was ready. If someone would just come and wash their feet, they could begin the Passover feast. The room grew quiet as they waited. Uncomfortably quiet. None of the disciples would look at the others. Each one of them knew what needed to be done, but none of them would do it. I'm not going to do the work of a servant, each one probably thought. After all, I deserve the most important job in Jesus' new kingdom. I am not going to get down on my knees and wash the other's feet. Jesus knew what his disciples were thinking. He desperately wanted to teach them that his kingdom was built on love. The way to show his love to others was to unselfishly put others first. Jesus' disciples had spent three years with him, but they still had not learned the most important lesson. Greatness in God's kingdom comes through humble service to others. So Jesus gave them one last example. Quietly, he got up from the table and took off his coat. He wrapped the towel around his waist. He poured water into the bowl. Without saying a word, he began to wash the disciples' feet. He didn't lecture. He just did the job they each thought they were too important to do. Can you imagine how embarrassed they felt? He was their master, the Son of God, the creator of the universe, and he was doing the work of a servant. It was more than Peter could bear. Lord, you are not going to wash my feet, he exclaimed. If I don't wash you, you have no part with me, Jesus replied. Jesus was washing more than the dust from his disciples' feet. He was washing away their pride and selfishness. He was teaching them to serve one another. He was showing them how to reach those to whom they would soon be preaching the good news. Jesus finished and sat down. Do you understand what I have done for you? He asked his disciples. Now that I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have given you an example. You should do as I have done for you. Serve others, Jesus was saying. Don't be ashamed to do anything that will show my love. Humility is a sign of greatness. That night, Jesus' disciples learned a lesson they would never forget. Jesus wants us to learn that lesson, too. When Jesus was finished, he gave another promise. He said, I will not have another service like this until I share it with you in heaven. Someday we will all be with Jesus, and we will share in that special service. But for now, Jesus wants to help all of us live a life of helpfulness to others. That's one way to show God's love to others. Hey boys and girls, wasn't that neat to see how Jesus showed his love for others simply by serving them, by doing a task that other people didn't want to do, that was dirty or unpleasant. I wonder if there's any chores like that around your house that maybe your mom and dad asked you to do that are sometimes unpleasant, and by doing them, we can show love for others and help that we're helping them. Hmm, maybe it's an unpleasant chore like taking out the trash. Sometimes trash is okay if it's just paper trash, but you know, you ever had that trash that had a lot of food in it? Or maybe it was a dirty diaper or something? Ooh, and they really smell. But do you think that maybe taking out the trash could be a way to show that you wanna serve somebody and that you love them? If you do the unpleasant things for them, then you show Jesus' love. Or maybe it's using this stuff to clean this place. 
Now this is not my favorite place of the house, but sometimes the dirty jobs just have to be done, right? And you gotta scrub, and it's a little unpleasant cleaning the toilet. But do you think it makes Jesus happy when we do that for others? So here's our challenge for today, boys and girls. You saw how Jesus washed his disciples' feet and what that did for them. He's really challenging us to do those unpleasant tasks for other people too. So I wanna ask, hmm, is there a task you could do this week for somebody else? First of all, I want you to start by thinking inside your house. There, there's two, two steps to this challenge. One is to do a chore for somebody in your house this week that normally you don't have to do. Help them. That's a good, good way to practice helping others like Jesus did. And the second thing I want you to do is I want you to brainstorm as a family, and you can do that right now, as soon as you're done with this, this video, about a way that your family can reach out and help somebody who needs help. Now, it's gonna be kind of hard because we're all kind of staying home, but maybe there's something outdoors where you don't have to get close to somebody. You could help somebody uh, with something outside. I won't tell you what, I bet you can think of something. Or maybe you could deliver something to someone or send them something or communicate with them somehow online. There's many ways to still help people, but think of some way that you can help someone, especially if the task is unpleasant for that person and you can take care of their need or their problem. When you do that, it'll be like you're washing their feet and you're helping them and serving them and showing them Jesus's love. If you're willing to do that challenge and get creative with it, then we're gonna, we're gonna put out a, a prize this week for the family that does that. Uh, if we can get entries by Monday of any, any families that have decided to take up this challenge, we're going to judge whatever the best entry is, and that family will get some pizzas delivered to their doorstep, okay? Two pizzas delivered to their doorstep to help feed their family for that evening. You have a little pizza party on us, okay? So get creative. Figure out a way to uh, serve someone like Jesus did, okay? Talk to your mom and dad. Give them ideas and brainstorm together. But remember, the first step of that is uh, helping with chores at home, something you don't normally have to do. If you can do those two things and let us know about it, message us on the Facebook page, uh, then we can uh, judge those prizes, judge those things on Monday, and we'll get a prize out to the family who gets the most creative with that, okay? Have a blessed Sabbath, and uh, don't forget, we have our food bank this afternoon. If you're not able to help with that, then uh, please pray for us as we step out and be the hands and feet of Jesus, helping those in our community in a careful way to get them food. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for showing us today how Jesus loved people and served them. He showed us your love when he did that. So help us to do the same for other people this week. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Bye kids, have a great Sabbath.